Hi everyone on YouTube and all the NFL YouTube prognosticators and football fans everywhere. This is Andrew Warren, back here once again, giving you my thoughts about week 4 and my picks for week 5 of the 2021 NFL season. Check it out. First off, um, I had a very good successful week last week. I went 14-2 and two straight up overall against the spread 11-5 and five, and over and under just barely making the um, above the 500, 9-7 overall. Very successful week, and I'm going to try to continue that trend as much as I can. But uh, what happened last week, my thoughts about it, Cincinnati and um, Jacksonville, you know, enough for that game. It was a really uh, the most iconic about that game was um, Joe Burrow and um, and, and Trevor Lawrence meet, met for the first time since their meeting for, uh, I think it was the national championship game a couple of years before that. So, I, if I'm not mistaken, it was a college playoff game or something like that. So, anyways, that was a pretty interesting part on that one. So, But, you know, Jackson, Cincinnati got the win out of that one over Jacksonville. So, now the problem with Urban Meyer is he not handling this really well and everything like that for the NFL level and may go to college. I don't know. And the Washington football team and the Atlanta Falcons, oh, they got a big tight war of, of that game. The Washington um, uh, pulled out the win, but, you know, at what cost? You know, you know about Tyler Hickendee hit, did pretty well, so I didn't give him a drop for that. But the now the absence of Logan Thomas, and that's going to be a big downfall for the Washington football team. Now they have a lot of injury prone going on right now for the Washington football team right now. So that's a little question mark being said, but they're still getting wins. Uh, we'll see how it turns out. Buffalo and Houston, you know, Buffalo um, came out strong, you know, they ended up killing them that yesterday, so the day before that, so, well, on Sunday, you know, they just bounded them out like 40 to nothing or something like that, but anyways, that being, that being said, I think the problem with them now is I think Buffalo, it looks like Josh Allen's continuing his MVP run, so I think that's going to be a really good success of all that, so I think that, I think that's going to continue to be the trend of that, so, so anyways, Last I heard about a viral video for Urban Meyer, I meant to tell you, but he apologized and stuff like that. We'll continue that in a bit. So, anyways, that being said, let's continue on. Chicago, Detroit, you know, Lamar, ja I mean, uh, Justin Fields got his first win as a Chicago Bear, so he got the win on, over that one. So I think that will be, that's a good uproar for Justin Fields. I think that he will try to continue the spread, but I think it's going to be a long season. So we'll see how that one turns out. It, Dallas and Carolina, I think Dallas is going to, Dallas has got the win, but it almost pulled it out in the end, but you know, that being said, Carolina almost won, but you know, Carolina's been an impressive team so far, so, and, anyway, but that, and that being said, Indianapolis and Miami, you know, Indianapolis got the win, you know, and now with Miami with another injury um, team problem right now for them, and so, and everything else going on, so now that they got the loss because of it, so we'll see how that one turns out. Cleveland in Minnesota. That was a short and short game. It was all like three touchdowns in that game, but Cleveland got the win. You know, Baker Mayfield and they had a no decent game and everything. But New Orleans and the Giants. So, you know, New Orleans they just came out strongly in that one. That was an overtime game, too. And then New Orleans just pulled it out really in this, really in the end. And of course, Baltimore and Denver. You know, Baltimore got the sneak, uh, got a win yet over Denver. Now, now the question is for um, Teddy Bridgewater: Is he still gonna be a, still himself? So that's gonna be the thing on that one. Tennessee and the Jets. Well, I gotta say, Tennessee they're doing pretty good. I mean, they looked like the the team I expected the, the Tennessee Titans to be. So that's the way I look at it. Kansas City and Philadelphia. You know. I think that was a great homecoming for Kansas City. I know, I think, I mean, on Philadelphia for Andy Reid. I think that it was his first game back since he went to Kansas City after he got fired from them. So it's a pretty interesting process on that. And in the LA Rams and the Arizona Cardinals. Now the Arizona Cardinals now are the only undefeated team left right now. Let's see how long they keep the trend. San Francisco and Seattle, you know, we all knew about San Francisco and Seattle. I mean, Seattle has some questionable things they're doing right now and everything else. But maybe if they get Russell Wilson some help, maybe he'll maybe he'll stay and maybe he'll be a contender again. Green Bay and Pittsburgh, you know, Green Aaron Rodgers is I'll say this, Aaron Rodgers likes he's trying to prove a point in Green Bay, like, look, I'm here. I'm your guy. So that's pretty much but Pittsburgh's having some question mark situations right now. And everything out like that. I don't know. 
So what's going on with Pittsburgh? Is it Big Ben? Is it offense or defense or anything like that? But I'll tell you this. We'll say this. I don't want to hear any nonsense about firing Mike Tomlin. I don't blame any much on him as much as the players, you know. It's not his fault that they're, they're not struggling right now, that they're struggling. It's not. I don't see it, and I don't, and if they, like I keep saying, if they're going to, Pittsburgh fires them, they're going to go for a long haul. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Let, Saturday Night Football, with my Patriots in the, in the uh, Bucks. Well, I'll say this, you know, it was a good game, despite the fact that Brady, you know, came back in, in there, even though that is history, I'll say that right now, but one of my thoughts about that game was it probably one of the most emotional games that I ever witnessed in my life, you know, I watched it, like the welcome back and everything else, they cheered for him when he returned to Foxborough, you know, and everything else, but honestly, both Brady and Jones, Mac Jones, they did a pretty decent game. Mac Jones, yeah, for the first time in nearly 30 years, if I would say that, what what I would I would I would say that Mac Jones had 19 completed passes for a rookie for the first time in 30 years, probably since Favre, if I'm not mistaken, 91. I think it was Brett Favre when he was a Atlanta Falcon at the time. So, but anyways, that that being said, but you know that game alone is just like. I don't know if I would have gone for it on fourth. I would have kicked it on fourth and three with less than a minute to go. I personally would have just gone for it on fourth down, try to kill the clock, try to run and like kneel down, try to get Nick Folk to tie the game when he field goal. I don't know. That's just me on that part. I don't know. You know, look at me more. Nick Folk had an injury too, so I think that was a problem as well. He was battling that, but you know, he's. He almost made it through, though. I would say that. You know, he's still a good kicker. I'm not going to bestow any folk on that. So, anyways, the Vegas and LA Chargers, you know, the Chargers pull up an upset, you know, in there and everything else going in there. And, you know, Ve but don't get, and Vegas looked like, 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 oh, my God, what happened to Vegas? When they were a couple of weeks, they were really good. All of a sudden, they flat on their face on the track. Chargers. So, I don't know. Well, anyways... But overall, overall in the year, I'm like forty and like overall for straight up fourteen and two. I like I mentioned forty and twenty four overall, and against the spread, I went eleven and five. Like I mentioned before, and thirty four and twenty nine overall, over and under, and I went nine and seven. Like I mentioned, and overall for the year, I'm thirty four and thirty. So there you go. Those are my standings right now. My thoughts about week four. Let's get on to my week five picks. We're going to kick things off on Thursday night with the LA Rams and the Seattle Seahawks division rival game. This is the game I expected to be a little low score and tough game, you know. It's really hard to bet on the divisional games, especially if they're really good. Both teams are really good and stuff like that. So anyways, I think for this game, I'm going to actually see a lot of um, noises going on for Seattle on that. But for, C for um, the LA Rams, I really think that it's going to be a defensive game, I think, on both sides. So I think it's going to be a really close game. So, anyways, I think I'm going to take the LA Rams in over the Seattle Seahawks in this game. So, so if um, Russell Wilson had a little help, I think they'll be a little different. So, so I'm going to take the Rams over the Seahawks in that game in Seattle. On the line, though, the Rams are favored by one in this game, one of our pick them. So, I'm going to take the Rams minus one. Over and under, it's 54 and a half. I'm going to go under 54 and a half. All right, the Atlanta Falcons and the New York Jets in London. So in this game, I think this is going to be a really close game. I think this is going to be like a really tight spiral on, on that. I mean, the, we got our first London game of the for, for the first time since the pandemic. So this is pretty optimal on that. But by the way, so in that game, I really think it's going to be really close, I think. But you know what? I think I'm going to go with the, vet, the old veteran team with the Atlanta Falcons in this game. So I'm going to take the Atlanta Falcons over the New York Jets in this game. On the line, though, this is where it gets dicey. The, the Falcons are favored by 3.5 in this game. I'm going to take the Jets plus 3.5 uh, because I think they may have a shot of winning this game. Over and under, it's 46. I might go under 46 in this game. The Minnesota Vikings and the Detroit Lions. I think this is a, for this game in Minnesota, I think this is a game that we're going to see a lot of um, question marks on Cook Cousins, if he's going to be a great player or, or whatnot, so... So that I don't really see he's the greatest player ever. So I think they still got some question marks to be answered. And we'll probably see that in a bit. 
But at any rate, I think the Minnesota Vikings in, are at home. I think they're going to beat out the, the Detroit Lions in this game. I think they're going to beat them out. So I'm, I'm going to take the Minnesota Vikings over the Detroit Lions in this game. On the line, um, Minnesota's favored by eight in this game. That's pretty fair. If that was more than eight, I would have taken Detroit. So, but anyways, I'm going to take Minnesota minus eight. Over and under, it's 49. I'm going to go over 49. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Miami Dolphins. Well, for this game, Tom Brady has a lot of history with the Miami Dolphins that has their, as they pop in the, as Tom Brady faces each other in the AFC East all most of his career and everything. They always, the Miami Dolphins always gave him a hard time and all that thing like that. But, I think this is going to be a close game. I expect it to be a, you know, a really tough matchup, especially the Miami Dolphins know Tom Brady for a very long time. You know, now Coach Flores knows him for for a long time as well. So I think he's going to have some some um, some plans out for him. But you know, I think Tampa Bay is going to end up winning this game. So I'm going to take Tampa Bay over the Miami Dolphins this game. On the line, though, uh, Minnesota, I mean, Tampa Bay is favored by ten and a half in this game. I'm going to take. Now, Miami plus 10.5. Oh, God. Hold on just a moment. Over and under. I forgot the over and unders on this one. I thought last time I heard it was like there was a no number on this one. So, I'm, just leave me a minute to check that one out. Because I, I, last I heard it was on, on a Monday. I looked up the over and unders on that one. Not so, but I, there was there was no number for that one yet. So, I, as long as in in there. So, there we go. Oh, it's 49.5. Here we go. And then, Finally got it in. I even got it in yet. So it's 49 and a half. I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to say a little over 49 and a half. I think that's going to be at some high range on that one. Sorry about that. I've, I've been looking for that number for a while. And it hasn't came up yet. So so my apologies to that. Anyways, let's continue on with the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Denver Broncos. So for this game, the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be at home against Denver. But, you know, Teddy Bridgewater is having a... Successful comeback, you know, being the starting quarterback, he really wants the job from Denver, so I think he might solve the quarterback problem for Denver since Peyton Manning retired for the last, I don't know, a few years now. So, anyways, that being said, I think Detroit, I think Pittsburgh, I think Pittsburgh wants to prove that they're not a fluke team and they're trying to get a win. So, I'm going to take Pittsburgh over to Denver in this game. On the line, though, it's Pittsburgh, last time I checked, it was Pittsburgh was the favorite in this game, minus one, but as of right now, I believe it's a pick 'em. So I'm going to take Pittsburgh minus one or a pick em. On the line, I mean, over and under, it's 40. I'm going to go over 40 in this game. The New Orleans Saints and the Washington football team. Well, like I mentioned, you know, Logan Thomas injury, I think that's going to really set them back a little bit for the Washington football team. But, you know, Tyler Hicken, Hickening, I think he's doing pretty well for the Washington football team. I think he's going to be a, a really good, successful team down the line. But, you know, get, I got to give Tyler Hicken some credit, you know. He had never gave up in his football dreams. He never did. You know, he was on my Patriots for a while. Then he was on a couple of football teams. I think he was on the Browns for on their down years, I think. So, all of a sudden he goes to the XFL. But I was doing pretty well over there until the pandemic hit. And all of a sudden he gets to the Washington football team. He's putting up some good numbers. So, I, I think he found a home in Washington. But, you know, they're facing the New Orleans Saints. You know, I think the New Orleans Saints, I think they're going to be a guy going to be a defensive team. It's going to be a defensive team battle. I know that. They're, both teams are really good at defensively. So I think I'm going to stick with that guns on that one. So anyways, I'm going to take New Orleans Saints over the Washington football team in Washington. Although I know New Orleans favored by one in this game. I'm going to take New Orleans minus one. Over and under to 44. I'm going to stick to under 44 on this one. The Carolina Panthers and the and the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, Carol, uh, Carolina traveling to Ohio and uh, Philadelphia in this game. You know, but Carolina's having an impressive um, turnaround so far as of right now. You know, Sam Darnold is doing is doing pretty well. I know, I know that. So the court, I think not Carolina. The Carolina's going to have a quarterback for a while with him. So I think I'm going to stick with Carolina over the Philadelphia Eagles in this game. But don't get me wrong about Jalen Hurts. He's putting up some good numbers. He just needs help as well, like Russell Wilson in, in does in Seattle. If Philadelphia can get him some help. They could be eventually contenders. So, I think we're going to see what they're going to do on that. Maybe get a protect uh, guard, or maybe they're going to get a wide receiver in the draft in the upcoming April. So, that's something to tune in for Philadelphia on that one. So, I'm going to take Carolina over the Philadelphia um, Eagles in this game. On the line, though, Carolina's favored by four in this game. I'm going to take Jacksonville. I mean, I'm Carolina minus four. Over and under, it's 45. I'm going to go over 45. Tennessee and Jacksonville right now. So, all right, Tennessee is going to... 
is uh, going you know, to Jacksonville right now. And then now Urban Myers apologized for that viral video that he that came out with him. So I don't know what's going on with that. I think his reputation in the NFL is going downhill right now. So I think that's the big, big problem with for um, Urban Meyer. If I'm Urban Meyer right now, I would keep your mouth shut and just focus on the on the game. So that's my advice for Urban Meyer. But I'm not sure he's going to listen to that. But you know, anyways. That being said, I'm gonna for this game. I think I'm gonna stick with my guns. My my Super Bowl contender. I'm gonna take Tennessee over the Jacksonville Jaguars in this game in Jacksonville. On the line, Jacksonville's favored by four. I mean, uh, Tennessee's favored by four in this game. I'm going to say Jacksonville plus four. I think it's going to be a close game. Over and under, it's 48. I'm going to go under 48. My New England Patriots and the Houston Texans. Well, I think for this game alone, I think that my New England Patriots are going to be shaking up after that loss. You know, I think they're going to try to figure something out and everything else right now. But in Houston's side, you know, on Houston, I think they're going to have a... They had Tyrod, um... That Tyrod Taylor being hurt right now. Now they're going with the rookie quarterback, which I believe was um, Jeff Driscoll right now, who is a 28-year quarterback, I think. I think that's... No, I don't think that's him, but they, I thought they were doing something. But anyways, I think that being said, I think the way that things are going right now, Houston's just having a lot of problems right now. So that's the way I look at it. So anyways, I think that, that Davis Mills, I think. I think... Oh, yeah, the, the quarter... Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Davis Mills, I'm sorry, the rookie uh, who came out of the third round of the draft. I think he's gonna he's the quarterback right now. And he's a rookie, so when it comes to Bill Belichick and rookie quarterbacks, don't bet against a, don't bet against Belichick on rookie quarterbacks. So that means that take my I'm gonna take my New England Patriots over the Houston Texans in Houston. On the line though, my Patriots are favored by nine and a half in this game, so. I'm going to take Houston minus 9.5. Over and under, it's 39.5. I'm going to go under 39.5 because I don't think Houston's going to score a lot. So, let's see how it goes. The um, the Ve Las Vegas Raiders and the Chicago Bears. Well, for this case scenario, I think for um, sh um, for Chicago, they're at home. The Mart, uh, Justin Fields is going to have a great game. But the Vegas... Um, Raiders, they've been doing pretty well, you know, and even though they lost they lost last uh, Monday night. So I think for but I think Las Vegas is gonna shake the loss out. Oh, excuse me. Las Vegas is gonna take the loss up and they're gonna channel it into a win this week. So I think that's what John Gruden's gonna do. So I'm gonna take the Vegas Raiders over the Chicago Bears in this one in Chicago. I'm sorry, Justin Fields. I've been I've been praying about you all year and I'm still praying about you. I still think I'm mean, you're gonna do pretty well. Let's see. I just hope you, I hope you do pretty well against um against the uh, Vegas Raiders right now. If you guys if Chicago get the win, I think Justin Fields is gonna be in the hot spot for the rookie of the year, which I had him it has him as my rookie of the year, and I'm still sticking my guns on that. On the line though, Vegas is favored by uh, four and a half in this game. I'm gonna take Vegas minus four and a half. Overnight is forty five. I'm gonna go over forty five because I think it's gonna be an offensive shootout. The LA Chargers and the Cleveland Browns. I think this is a game that you're going to see a lot of. It's going to a toss up in this game. I was debating back and forth on this game. Who's going to win? Who's going to lose? And everything else like that. But, you know, Justin Herbert and Baker Mayfield, I think they're going to have a shootout as well. And this is the way I see it for that one. So I'm going to take the LA uh, Chargers to win this game. It's because it's in LA. I'm going to take them over the Cleveland Browns in this game. On the line, though, the, Cle the uh, Cleveland Browns are. Our favorite by one in this game. I'm going to take the LA Chargers plus one because it's considered an upset. Over and under, it's um, 49. I'm going to go over 49. The Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. A classic NFC East rival. Let's see how this one's going to play out in this game and everything else like that. Now, for the for the Dallas Cowboys in this game, you're pretty much looking forward to what Dak Prescott's going to do. And then he's going to shoot the guns out. I think that's the way I see it for that game. So for Dallas, I'm going to, I'm going to take Dallas over the New York Giants in this game. And Dallas... On the line, though, Dallas is favored by uh, seven and a half in this game. We're gonna take Dallas plus seven because it's a divisional game. It's really close. I think it's gonna be a really close game. Overnight is fifty-two. I'm gonna go over fifty-two because you never know what Danny Dimes can do. The Arizona Cardinals and the San Francisco 49ers. All right, this game I'm looking forward to very much. I think this is gonna be a very very close game. So if I'm gonna have to pick a win winner, it's possibly that the Cardinals will lose. This game could be one of them, but. I'm not saying they are going to lose this game because I think there's going to be a lot of problems with 
for San Francisco's offense. I think the Arizona's defense is going to take advantage of it. So I think that's the way I see it from them. So I'm going to, so I'm going to take the Arizona Cardinals over the San Francisco um, 49ers in this game. On the line out, Arizona's favored by five in this game. I'm going to take Arizona minus five. Over and under is 50. I'm going to go over 50 in this game. Saturday Night Football, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills. So, so Kansas City is at home. They got shaken up um, uh, from a loss, I believe, from last week. Hold on. Hold on, excuse me for a minute. Oh, yeah, they're shaking up the win from Philadelphia. Now they go back home. They'll face Buffalo, which is probably a playoff preview, I'm thinking. So I'm thinking for this game, I think this we're going to see a game that's going to be a very close game, which this is the first time Buffalo and um, and Kansas City met for the uh, – since that AFC Championship game a season ago, so uh, this is gonna be this basically the rematch of that. So, anyways, I think what I'm gonna see at this game is gonna be another offensive explosion in this game with two great quarterbacks with Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. I think we're gonna see a, a quarterback battle in this game. So we're definitely gonna see that. I think the, whoever's gonna get wins. The, I think whoever's gonna win the coin toss first, that they're probably gonna win the game. So I think that's the way I see it for that game. But I think for this game, I'm gonna take Kansas City over the Buffalo Bills in this game. In Kansas City, on the lineup, Buffalo. I mean, Kansas City is favored by three in this game. I'm going to take Buffalo plus three because there's possibly they could win it. Over and under, it's 56. I'm going to go over 56 and a half. Monday Night Football, Baltimore and Indianapolis. So for this game, the way I look at it for this, this game, though, there's still some question marks about Indianapolis' future right now and what they're going to do. That and personally, they should have just drafted a quarterback. So I think that's I think that's the way they're going to try to tank it and just go for the quarterback. <laughs> but Anyways, that being said, I think Baltimore's going to win out this game, and I think I'm going to stick with that, though. Yeah, so Lamar Jackson, I think, is going to put up some good numbers, and, I'm gonna, and it's in Baltimore, too, so I'm going to take Baltimore Ravens over the Indianapolis Colts on Monday Night Football in Baltimore. On the line, now Baltimore's favored by 7 in this game. I'm going to take Baltimore minus 7. Over and under, it's 47. I'm going to go over 47 this mark. All right, shout-outs this week. Um, it's actually a couple this week. Is there a special reason for that? Because I had a lot of personal issues going on, you know, a lot going on in my, in my life right now, you know. I mean, uh, because all, all personal sides, I'm really protective of my private life, but my uncle just got diagnosed with COVID and everything else like that, so I was going through a lot with that, you know, and all that. I mean, but, however, at last I heard, he was doing better, so he's... I, he's day to day right now, so that's the latest I've heard. That was like a few days ago and stuff like that. But anyways, shout outs this week. The couple of shout outs this week is my good old friend Edward Leonard and and uh, Geo knows who uh, contacted me off for that week. So I want to thank them for that. So anyway, that was just like a shout out for them, you know. And I'm, and yeah, plus I want to thank everyone else who has been contacting me as well. On that, there was a couple of people here and there on that. So anyways, so anyways, that being said. This is Andrew Warren saying signing off, saying stay safe, stay healthy, and and um, then make sure you then make sure you t contact your loved ones, you know, for all with all the coronavirus um, pandemic going on and stuff like that. But anyways, but anyways, um, big uh, anyways, I wanted to say thank you all for um, contacting me for that and everything else. And anyone, and anyways, this is Andrew Warren saying rock out. Ah, uh, don't you hate it that you forgot one uh, pit, uh, one game that you totally forgot and everything? Well, I did. But I did forget the Green Bay Packers in the Cincinnati game. So we're going to go on to that. It's in Cincinnati in this one. So for this game, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to do Aaron Rodgers things. And Joe Burrow is probably going to learn from that, from, uh, what he can do to be a much better quarterback than he is and going from there. So despite getting the win in Jacksonville last week in that Thursday nighter, so it's a pretty much a long week for Cincinnati. So I think it's going to be a close to thing everyone expecting. But I think it's going to be a good, a good one to do. So, and it's in Cincinnati, so that's really good for Joe Burrow in this one. So I think I'm going to see how we're going to go with this one. I think Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers are going to take the win in this game. But I think they're going to you know, beat out Joe Burrow. But I think it's going to be close to what everyone's expecting then. So I'm going to take the Green Bay Packers over the Cincinnati Bengals in this game. On the line now. Green Bay is favored by three and a half in this game. I'm gonna take Green Bay minus three and a half. Over and under, it's 48, and I'm gonna go over 48 in this game. And now I get to wrap up my um, picks for the week. Like I mentioned, the shout out some this week, uh, a couple of them because of what's going on. Like I mentioned about my uncle being in COVID and stuff like that. 
So anyways, a good shout out to Gio DeFranco, known as Gio Knows. I'm going to give him a shout out for contacting me. And Edward Lerner too. So I'll give him a shout out because a couple of them contacted me. I'll, no, and everyone else has been contacting me as well. I want to thank you all for that too. So I know I, I, I can't get to everybody on that. And I do apologize. So anyways, that being said, and I hope you enjoy the games this week. This is Andrew Warren. Finally, once again, shut, uh, shutting off, saying stay safe, stay healthy, and rock out.